unit six, we're going to be covering confidence intervals for proportions. And this is a pretty big shift from what we were doing in unit five. In unit five, we were testing a single value for the parameter. So we would draw conclusions like, we have strong evidence to conclude that the proportion who invest in 401ks is greater than 0.61. So all we knew was that it was greater than this one single value, 0.61. But the work that we did in Unit 5 with test statistics and p-values, that didn't tell us how much greater than 0.61. It didn't give us an estimate for the true parameter. So that's what we're going to be doing in Unit 6. We'll find a range of reasonable values for the parameter. And these quotes are about market research, but confidence intervals are really important in all different areas of business. Um, so these quotes describe confidence intervals as a way of reducing risk because they consider the sample size and the potential variation in the population and give us an estimate of the range in which the real answer lies. So instead of being sort of overly confident that we have the one answer, we're acknowledging the uncertainty in our estimate. Confidence intervals are a bright yellow caution sign telling you to take that sample result with a grain of salt because you can't be more specific than this range. And we're going to start with a specific example from a former student in MSIT 3000. Um, she's a community manager for Cosmic Delivery now, and she was doing a brand awareness survey to see how many people had heard of Cosmic Delivery. So I agreed to help her collect her data in exchange for um, her allowing me to use the data in the class in the future. So I really appreciate her sharing this data with us. So this student ended up taking a sample of 234 people, and of those, 57 knew about cosmic delivery. So basically, we've got our best guess for the population proportion is this sample proportion, 57 out of 234. So since this is the statistic, this is the number that describes the sample, we're going to use p hat for that. So it's 57 out of 234. And we'll try to get in the habit of keeping four decimal places just to make sure that you always get full credit in WebAssign. Um, and this will be 0.2436. So we have our estimate, but we want to know how precise is this estimate. We want to find a range of plausible values for the population proportion, the proportion who know about cosmic delivery in the population. So to do this, we're going to use a sampling distribution. So if you remember, a sampling distribution is different from the other distributions that we've learned in this class because every dot in a sampling distribution is a statistic. In this case, we're thinking about all the different values of p hat that we could get, all the different sample proportions that we could get, um, based on one parameter. So these would be centered around the true parameter, and we'll mark that as p. So what does the sampling distribution tell us? It tells us how close we expect our estimate, um, how close we expect our estimate, which is p hat, right, the sample proportion, how close we expect the sample proportion to be to the true parameter. So how far is p hat from p? So we know that the sampling distribution is normal, assuming that the sample size is large enough, and we have a pretty large sample here, 234 people. So because we have a normal sampling distribution, we can use the empirical rule. The empirical rule says that p hat will be within two standard errors of p for about 95% of samples, right? So if you go out two standard errors, and maybe you mark that here and here, that's not a beautiful picture, but something like that, um, that for 95% of your samples, your p hat will be within that range of p. So at first, that doesn't seem very useful, right? We don't know what our true parameter is, um, so how are we going to set up our sampling distribution? But what makes this useful is that we can flip it around. So if p hat is within two standard errors of p in 95% of samples, we can turn that around and say that p is within two standard errors of p hat in about 95% of samples. So this is useful because we can take our p hat value, which is what we would have in real life, uh, we have a sample proportion, and we can add two standard errors to each side, or add and subtract two standard errors from each side. And we know that the true parameter will be within that range for about 95% of samples. So let's do that. So we're going to do our sample proportion p hat. 
plus or minus 2, and then I'm going to use the formula for the standard error of p hat. So that was p times 1 minus p over n. But we do still have the problem. We don't know the true value of p, right? That's the whole point of this, is that we're trying to estimate that. So we just have to substitute in our best guess, which again is the sample proportion p hat. That's our best guess right now. So plugging in the numbers, the sample proportion was 0.2436 plus or minus 2 square root of 0.2436 times 1 minus 0.2436 and then dividing by the sample size which was 234. So we end up with our sample proportion 0.2436 plus or minus this amount. So if we work it all out, this comes out to be 0.0561. This amount that we're adding and subtracting on each side, that's called the margin of error. So we have our sample statistic, that's like our best estimate of the parameter, but we're giving ourselves a little bit of wiggle room by adding the margin of error on each side. So if we work this out, that'll give us the 95% confidence interval. So putting that together, the lower end, if we subtract, we get 0.1875, and if we add, we get 0.2997. So that's our range of reasonable values for the parameter. We think that the population parameter is somewhere between those values. So notice that this 2, this multiplier, corresponds to the 95%, right? That's coming from the empirical rule. So we know that the multiplier for 95% confidence is roughly 2, um, but if we want to change the confidence level, we're going to use the normal distribution to figure out what that multiplier should be, and that multiplier in general is called Z star. So we'll see how to find Z star in a later video. But basically our confidence interval has these three parts. So we take our statistic, which in this case is a sample proportion, plus or minus this multiplier, and the term for that is a critical value. So we're using right now um, 2 for our critical value, but we'll see how to change it, times this formula, which is our standard error. So that's the general formula for a confidence interval. Also, if you multiply the critical value times the standard error, all of that together is called the margin of error. So those are two ways of expressing the formula for the confidence interval. And then when we interpret, we're thinking about it as a range of reasonable values for the population parameter. So we always want to describe the population parameter in context. So in this case, we would say we are 95% confident that the proportion who know about cosmic delivery, that's what they were asking on the survey, the proportion who know about cosmic delivery in the population, because this is a parameter, so it's a number that describes the population, that that proportion is between these two values, is between 0.1875 and 0.2997. So you may be thinking the population proportion, what population can we actually generalize to? And we'll come back to that in a later activity. Um, but for now, this is the basic formula for calculating a confidence interval and interpreting the interval in context.